At the end of Parashat Re'eh, the Torah teaches us about all of the Jewish holidays. When the Torah introduces the holiday of Pesach, it says it in a very interesting way. The Torah says, Shamor et Chodesh Aviv. You need a safeguard and to protect the month of the Aviv. Aviv is the spring season. Ve'asita Pesach Adonai Lo'echa. And that's when you have the holiday of Pesach. The Torah tells us that you need to be careful to make sure that the holiday of Pesach falls out in the season of spring. So at first thought, that's very simple. Holiday of Passover, Pesach, it's always in April, right around the, the springtime. So that's when it falls out. But the truth is, it's actually something that's very complex and it doesn't happen by itself. See, the seasons are based on the solar calendar. But the holidays, the Jewish holidays, are based on the lunar calendar. And the length of the solar calendar and the lunar calendar, it's, it's not the same. How long is the solar calendar? It's 365 and a quarter days, 365.25 days. The truth is, it's, it's, exa- it's actually a little bit shorter than that. It's 365.2425. It's a little bit less than a quarter, but that's for another time. So the solar calendar, but let's just for argument's sake, let's just say to make it simple, it's 365 and a quarter days. What about the lunar calendar? Well, the lunar calendar is made up of 12 lunar cycles. And how long is it from new moon to new moon? It's approximately 29 and a half days. Now again, that's, that's an approximate number. It's not an exact number, but let's say 29 and a half times 12 is 354 days. So on average, the solar calendar is 365 days and the lunar calendar is 354 days, giving you a delta or a difference of 12 days. That means the solar and the lunar calendars are, are around 11 to 12 days apart, depending on how it falls out. It's approximately 11 days difference between the solar and the lunar calendars. So if that's the case, that means whatever day Passover or Pesach falls out on this year, next year on the solar calendar, it'll be 11 days earlier. And the following year, it'll be 11 days earlier than that. And the third year, it'll be 11 days earlier than that, which means in a matter of three years, the holiday of Pesach would start a good 33 days or a month earlier, which means over the span of one decade, the holiday of Pesach would actually be three months earlier falling back into the another season. So if not, if there was no adjustments made, the holiday of Pesach after 10 years would fall out in the month of winter. And 10 years after that would fall out, in the, sorry, in the season of winter. And then it would, 10 years after that would fall out in the season of fall, 10 years after that season of summer. And so it would actually depart and diverge. The holiday of Pesach would not fall out in the the spring season. So how would they deal with this? The answer is in the times of the Sanhedrin, when we had the Supreme Court in Yerushalayim, the Supreme Court had a tool, a mechanism, and this tool was called Ibur Shana, or creating a Shana Me'uberet, which is essentially making it a leap year. A leap year for the lunar calendar is not an extra day like adding a February 29th, just one day. A leap year in the lunar calendar is adding an entirely extra month, an extra 30 days. And that's adding this Adar Sheni, adding a second month of Adar. So what they would do is they would calculate the holiday of Pesach. Is it going to fall out in the spring season? If it is, there's no need to add an extra month and make it a leap year. But if the holiday of Pesach, based on their calculations, would fall out in the winter, meaning spring hasn't hit yet, they need to push off the holiday. So how do they do that? They add an extra month. By adding that extra month, they would ensure that the holiday of Pesach falls out in the season of spring, which is what the Torah tells us to do when it says, Shamor et Chodesh Aviv Pesach. Make sure that the holiday of Pesach is in the season of spring. So this is what they would do at the times of the Supreme Court, at the times of the Sanhedrin. But around the year 359 of the Common Era, the Supreme Court, the Jewish Sanhedrin, wasn't allowed to convene anymore and were not allowed to do these calculations of the moon anymore. It was abolished by the Romans. They didn't allow us to do it anymore. So at that time, in the year 359 of the Common Era, approximately, the president of the Sanhedrin, the Nasi of the Beit Din, was his name was Hillel, Hillel Asheni. He was the great-grandchild of Hillel Hazaken. He was the president at the time. And he, who was very prominent with all these calculations, he understood the math and understood how the calculations worked. He put out a 19-year calendar cycle that built into that 19-year there are already leap years built in, seven leap years built into that 19-year cycle 
to make sure that the holiday of Pesach will not fall out in the winter and it will always remain in the spring. So he built a 19-year cycle. So there is a cycle for those 19 years and once the 19 years are done, you go back to the first year of the cycle and by following this cycle, you can ensure that even without the Sanhedrin getting involved, without them coming and, and doing the calculations, everything will be fine and good. What is that 19-year cycle? Again, there are seven, year, seven years in this 19-year cycle that have a leap year. So how does it work? The first year of the cycle is a regular 12-month year. Second year is also a regular 12-month year. But in the third year, it's a leap year. There are 13 months that year. So in years 3, 6, 8, 11, 14, 17, and 19, you have seven years those seven years each will have an extra month, which means in that 19-year cycle, you'll have an extra seven months. And when you add those extra seven months, it gets your lunar calendar and your solar calendar, if you do the math, it gets the, you to the same number of days. So after a 19-year cycle, you land on the same day. Um, and so this is to synchronize the lunar and solar calendars. It's really beautiful. Now, the truth is, it's plus or minus half a day or so. So it doesn't always fall out on the exact same day. It could fall out a day apart. Uh, and, you know, there's like this common knowledge that uh, for someone who has a English birthday and a Hebrew birthday, that it'll fall out on the same day for their 19th birthday. Um, the truth is, it didn't happen for me. My 19th birthday, my Hebrew and English birthday fell out a day apart. And at that time, I questioned my entire life's existence. Uh, but the truth is, it's actually very common. And there are reasons for it that I could explain at another time. It has to do with how the calendars are falling within the cycles of the leap year of the solar calendar. Obviously, if someone was born on a February 29th, 19 years later, there won't be a February 29th. So that's like testing the limit. You can see how it won't always fall out on the same day, but it'll always be within a day or two. So... What we now have is a 19-year cycle that was established in the year 359 of the Common Era, and we're still using that today. Thousand, over you know, almost 2,000 years later, or 1,600 years later, we're using that calendar today, uh, that 19-year cycle, to make sure that we're bringing in the extra months, having the leap years. Why? It all goes back to the Mitzvah of the Torah that says, Shamor et Chodesh Aviv. Safeguard to make sure that the holiday of Pesach falls out in the season of spring, it was done in the past by the courts, and now we have a fixed calendar that will synchronize the lunar and the solar calendars.